The TurboGrafx-16. We have NES at home. Okay, guys, let's be real. Most of you watching this video have no idea what this thing is. You've probably never seen one before in your life, even if you're old enough to have been around when this thing was new. And the fact you've never seen it before should clue you in on how successful it was. This is the TurboGrafx-16, also known as the PC Engine in Japan. It was designed by Hudson Soft and built by NEC. In Japan, it released in 1987 to compete with the Famicom, and it was so popular there that the PC Engine outsold the Famicom in Japan on its first year. So if it was such hot stuff, how come you've never heard of it? Because the American branch of NEC did not know what to do with this thing. They changed the console so much that it literally took them two more years to release it in the US. They changed the name to TurboGrafx-16 because Turbo sounds radical, cool. And 16 implies that it was 16-bit, but it wasn't. Only the GPU was 16-bit. The CPU was 8. It was die. And they didn't like how small and compact the PC Engine shell was. They thought Americans would think it's a kitty toy. So they beefed it up with this ridiculously huge shell to make it look like fancy hi-fi equipment. Because God knows I, as an American, want a big honking piece of plastic that takes up all my shelf space, don't you? I mean, look how big this thing is compared to the PC Engine. It's like sticking a toothpick in a glory hole. I would know. By the time this bastard child released in 1989, the hardware was already two years old and the Genesis was out and it was boasting highly superior hardware and a big library of games by several different companies all over the world. The Turbo Graphics? Uh, we got our type Everybody's got R-Type. 99% of all the Turbo Graphics games in the US were localized Japanese games by Japanese developers. Most of the time published by NEC themselves because they could not get any other publishers or US developers on board. Nobody wanted to take a chance on this thing. It just didn't have the market and publicity that Nintendo and Sega were offering. Today's equivalent would be like if you were given the offer to make your game an Intellivision Amico exclusive. Yeah, that thing's coming along nicely. So very few Western games were made. In fact, there's a story that NEC insulted EA's ability to make quality games for their system, and EA vowed to never make games for their system ever. Though they did finally get the rights to put John Madden's name on a football game they had to develop themselves. The other big problem is they barely marketed this thing. They spent so much money producing units and paying Hudson Soft royalties for every console and cartridge built. Not sold, built that they didn't have any money left over to make any good commercials or advertising. And the commercials they did make aren't all that memorable. But what about the games? Ooh, the games, I hear you ask. Were the games at least any good? Uh, I'll say this. The games that were released for this thing further cements how clueless they were of what they wanted to do with this console. And I think it's only fair we start with the game they packaged with the console when you bought it. Keith Courage in Alpha Zones. Literally who? Well, in Japan, this game was called... Basin. Which means Machine British Oil Field Crossing? Go home, Google, you're drunk. This game was based on an anime series, but NEC Murica thought it wasn't Murican enough, so now he's the hip and radical Keith Courage who eats hot dog burgers and pisses red, white, and blue. That's called kidney failure. Okay, rule number one about making a game that will piss me off as much as possible. Make your character's walk speed painfully slow. It's the perfect way to pad out your game and make sure it seems longer than it really is. So there's two different types of levels in this game. And you're looking at the worst type right here, where you're just hitting bad guys with swords and collecting money and doing it as slow as possible. Now the whole reason you're collecting money is so you can make the second type of level easier by buying upgrades. You have to go to all these huts and purchase upgrades when the people live in there. Then you do the second type of level where you transform into a mech and suddenly the game's fast paced. And he really is a mech this time. This isn't another instance where I called a Warhammer game a mech shooter. Please stop sending me death threats. Yo, Cuz has got a gun for a head. Literally a revolver that sprouted arms and legs and started shooting people. Where's your second amendment now? You have infinitely respawning bad guys, which is really annoying. In fact, I've even found some enemies as spawn point and just stood there. It's a good way to grind for items. The bosses are surprisingly not that hard for the most part. As long as you have the newest weapon upgrade, you're good. So it's really important you grind for money on those first parts. Oh boy. Come on with the money, damn! 
finally, shit. Now I can buy a better sword and make the boss easier. You know, you can also spend money to get your health gauge back up, but if you go out there with your mech, you can get hearts for free. And since you can stand in one place and grind the same enemy, I don't see why you should even pay to get health at all. I fucking hate these skulls that spawn every five seconds. Sometimes three or four at a time. It's really annoying. They just throw so many enemies at you and they respawn forever. They do all that and the bosses are just like, whatever. You know how they could have fixed this game? Get rid of this segment altogether and just have a shop that you go to at the end of the level. Because it really starts getting ridiculous by the fourth level where I'm getting attacked by lucky cats and they infinitely respawn. There's one level with lava where you just absolutely have to take the hit because you can't jump far enough. And before you say maybe you're supposed to ride on that rock, no, the rock hurts you. I can't stress enough, guys. The game that your console comes with is the most important game you will ever make because that is the game that everybody will play. Most of the time, the NES came with one of the Super Mario Brothers games or Super Mario Duck Hunt. Those games are legendary. They set the standard for what was expected out of the NES, and they were so good that people wanted to buy more games for the system. This game is barely mediocre. I would even argue that Altered Beast, the pack-in game, for the Sega Genesis, though not the best Sega game in the world, was still better than this shit. Because you got an arcade game that people have heard of. Instead, NEC packages a game based on an anime that nobody's ever heard of, and then localizes it into a more American sounding thing. This was doomed to fail. But are there other games in this console worth playing? Let's find out. Let's have a look at Bravo Man. I'm Dr. Bomb. I'm Dr. Bomb. Oh, that's not going to get annoying. Oh, you can extend your neck and headbutt things. He's got that engineer neck. So you spend most of the game side-scrolling and bravoing things to death, mostly robots that look like toys made by a mental person, and also a totem pole, because why not? They do change it up a little bit and give you like a shoot 'em up submarine stage, and it's whatever. I mean, I like this better than the real game. Remember when people used to call having sex the submarine races? You know, races implies there's more than one, so is it like an orgy? These are the things I think about in the shower. Night creatures. Oh, this game was ass. So this guy's just minding his own business and then a bat pops him upside the head. And then Dracula shows up and says, you are cursed. Whoa. And that's this game's story. This game has got some strong Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde vibes. A great music too. Not. <laughs> Stones. <laughs> Siva Gunner, what have you done to me? So what do you do in this game? Well, you punch rats, you punch bats, you punch werewolves, and it doesn't do anything, and you die. To kill the werewolf and this demon tree dude, you need to have the axe. And guys, you cannot aim with this thing without hurting yourself. And then there's this big demon tree that pops spikes out of the ground, and that's as far as I got. This game is so freaking difficult. Every time I get up to the demon tree dude, I have little to no health, and the axe acts like like it's not even hurting him at all. And then has the nerve to ask me if I want to save. I could not shift delete this ROM fast enough. Tiger Road, okay, halfway through this game, I was just laughing my ass off because this game has got the stupidest music I have ever heard. <laughs> Is this what people call penis music? I had to sit there and listen to this shit until I didn't find it funny anymore, just so I wouldn't be laughing while I'm recording this. First off, the way you throw this axe looks really stupid to me. Notice how it like goes down at an angle? I mean, the hitbox has to be like this, huh? What really bugs me is enemies that aren't even on screen that can hit you. Like, look at that. How was I to know there was a guy with spears up there? At least you can block them with the axe. What the fuck? He already respawned? Man, death means nothing in the Turbo Graphics world. What happens at funerals? A guy jumps out of the coffin and everybody drinks beer together? You do get other weapons though, like this spear, which I don't know if it's any better than the axe, really. And you get this spiky thing that you can shoot straight forward. It seems to do pretty good. This is another one of those games that have doors that look like they go somewhere, but they don't. The door I need to go through is already open at the top. There's not even any keys or anything to open that door at the bottom. Why even have it then? Because 
because fuck you, that's why. And suddenly the guy can fly. And the walls are spikes, the ceiling is spikes, the floor is spikes, even the spikes are spikes. And there's fireballs being thrown at you, just wonderful. The part where I finally lost my patience with this game was this damn boss fight. You can only hit the guy one time, and then you gotta wait for him to pop back up out of the water, and then he spins around the water, and then pops back up, and you hit him again. Sometimes he pops up halfway and changes his mind. This boss fight went on so long I thought the timer was gonna run out. And even though I did beat him, I had lost all my patience for this game and didn't want to play it anymore. That's gonna be a hard pass for me, Ghost Rider. Okay, so most of you, I assume, already know that the Darkwing Duck game on Turbo Graphics is a terrible piece of crap. Well, the same people behind it also made a Tailspin game. So you've got four levels to choose from, and it really doesn't matter what level you choose, they all equally suck. I never watched Tailspin as a kid, the only thing I know about it is there's tons of porn of this character. The only thing you have to defend yourself in this game is some coconuts that you throw, which remind me of the rocks in Friday the 13th, in that they never quite go where you want them to, but at least you can aim up. But you can't crouch down and throw them for some reason? Imagine an FPS game where you can't shoot while you're crouching. I bet there's one out there. You guys will tell me. I love how the items that give you points are just literally just points. They could have been coins, they could have been gold, they could have been floating pieces of dog shit. But nope, just numbers. This game was a paycheck. Nobody cared about this thing. You could see a paycheck game from a mile away. It's one of those games that works just enough. Nobody's really trying to break any grounds, we're just trying to make a game and not particularly a good one. Just a game so we can make money and go home. I'm just saying. You see these other things I'm collecting? You know what that's for? Is that an item? Is that something you use? Is it a weapon? Nope, it just gives you more points. And only if you collect enough of them. The worst part of this level is this boss right here. You know, the music popped up, but he hasn't activated yet. He doesn't activate until you get right up close to him and he hits you when you do. When he jumps, you're supposed to walk under him so you can get around him. But sometimes he jumps just low enough to where he hits you when you get under him. It fucks with you because you look Look like you have room, but you don't. It took me a while to realize he has a pattern. Two high jumps and two low jumps. But even with learning the pattern, it was still hard. It doesn't look hard because he's just jumping around is all he's doing. But there's so many instances where I just have to take the hit and I have way less health than he does. This old boss fight was just a shit show. What made me tap out though was this damn water level. I'll eat a donkey dick sandwich before I tell you I like a water level. Is that like a discount version of Under the Sea? What is your weapon even supposed to be? An air gun or something? If it is an air gun, God help you if it's tied to your oxygen. Be another one of those Kalik moments where health is ammo. All this game did is remind me I just need to look at Joe Lasko's art more often. He's done good by me. Okay, somebody's gonna put my head on a stick if I don't mention Splatterhouse. Yes, we all know Splatterhouse. It's an excellent game and it came out on the Turbo Graphics before it did anything else. But nowadays there's way better ways to play this game like Namco Museum on the Switch. Or you can play the original arcade version on MAME or something. But to be fair to the Turbo Graphics, for a long time this was the only way to play Splatterhouse at home. Until the Sega Genesis got Splatterhouse 2 and 3. It's a shame this version of the game is heavily censored, but they used to censor the hell out of games back then. Also, I know everybody brings this up, but I love the fact that you can punch and kick a knife. Guys, who would win in a fight? Rick from Splatterhouse or Jason Voorhees? I know what I think. I want to hear what you think. I don't actually care what you think. Comments help the algorithm. Summer Assault. Input your birthday of November 23rd, but why do you care? So an evil sorceress is sending out a whole bunch of freaky monsters to destroy the world, and who is going to stop her? Did you say a slinky with guns on it? I, I, I'm as speechless as you are. Aw, oh, shit, dude, the Slinky's tripping out, man! And it reversed my controls, I hate it when games do that! So why you're a Slinky, I can't answer that, but you can power yourself up, you can climb up all the walls, and just keep climbing walls until you find the boss. And once you find the boss, you can pretty much camp in one spot and just keep shooting at him. But you do have a bigger hitbox when you're shooting up, so... Yeah, whoever made this game was shooting up something. There always has been kind of a weird subgenre of games where you're weird inanimate objects. 
You ever seen that Super Nintendo game where you're a unicycle? Not a man on a unicycle, you're the unicycle. And then there's that Scott Cawthon game where you're a coffee machine. God knows coffee machines need more representation in video games. The bad thing about this game is the levels are set up like mazes, so it's incredibly easy to get lost. There's so many instances where I ended up back at my starting point. Have I ever told you my genitals smell like furniture polish? Samurai Ghost. Oh look, it's a Reddit user. Oh wow, that is some fluid animation. Why does he move his arms and legs like that? He moves around like a quap character. What's the story with these faces? Are these the faces of evil? I have never agreed with these games that insist on having a million frames of animation before you do a simple command. I blame Prince of Persia, one of the most overrated games in the world. Sluggish controls should not be a feature or a mechanic. When I push a button, I want something to happen right now. It's like when I dial up a sex hotline. I don't want to bullshit and him and haul with the woman for about half an hour. I want gratification. I want results. I want Instacum. Okay, game, how do I make this jump? I don't, of course. Anyway, this game's poo. If I wanted to watch a pink-haired idiot jump around, I'd play Tomba. Newtopia. Okay, this one was a request, so I'm gonna check it out. This game surprised me. It's very unique. An evil demon named Durr has captured the princess and the eight magic medallions, and it's up to our hero to find them all. So the first thing you notice is that it's an overhead view, and you've got two item slots up here, one for your sword and another one for anything else you have. When you reach the end of the screen, it scrolls to the other screen. And the idea is you walk around this map until you find a dungeon. When you find the dungeon, the real fun begins. You run around killing enemies to unlock doors, and then you use an item to find a hidden wall that you blow up with a bomb. And once you get to the end of the dungeon, you fight a boss, you defeat the boss, and you get your first medallion, the one of many that you'll have to get. You know, I ain't got nothing bad to say about this. It's a pretty good game. I'd say damn good, actually. I'm surprised this never turned into a series, because they got a really good concept here. Never seen anything like it before. Nope. Shockman, the Shockmaster. Oh, for fuck's sake, this is Mega Man. Come on, do you think I'm an idiot? You really couldn't come up with anything original like that Newtopia game? I mean, I'll play it, but it better be a damn fine Mega Man ripoff. The last time I saw a Mega Man ripoff, it ended up on what happened. I mean, yeah, it's pretty Mega Man-y, throwing a whole bunch of shit at me at once and getting hit by everything under the sun. This was a normal Stuart K. Riley Mega Man playthrough. Normally ends with me closing the emulator and playing something else. Like command mission. Now that's the shit. Uh-oh, we auto-scrolling, boys. Oh, and the buildings are falling down. Damn, Macro Falco must be fucking the buildings. If you got that joke, God have mercy on you. For some reason, it shakes things up with a submarine stage, which is easy at first, but it's got a segment at the end of it that is hard as balls, and I needed the save states to help me out with this one. And when I say hard balls, I literally mean balls that are hard to get past. I had to record that 50 times before I said that with a straight face. You can get rid of some of the balls by shooting the balls that are black and red. This game makes my balls black and blue. Oh, you thought we were done with the ball puns? How about this son of a bitch that looks like a character from 3D Balls? Balls, balls, balls of steeds. Hey, Civvy, look what I found, a sewer level. This might be the worst sewer level ever to exist. These big guys ain't no big deal. You can kill them pretty easily. It's these little fuckers that move around and drop their feces on you. They're such small targets. I can't hit them with my little bitty bullets, but they can hit me with their little bitty poo-poos. Look at this. Look at how much literal shit is raining down on me. And if you survive them, your life is so far drained that there's no way you're going to beat the boss. You might as well rip your own guts out and feed them to him because you're dead either way. And you know, when you die, you have to start at the very beginning of the stage. You know what else? When you die, the game glitches out for some reason. Oh, great programming. You know, you just die so hard the game glitches out. Speaking of glitches, and this is totally unrelated, I used to have a copy of Metal Gear Solid 2 that would freeze on the credits. It would get to this very last credit and then just lock up. One time it got stuck at the beginning of the credits and something that sounded a lot like this happened. I stay. Yeah, and that'll wake your parents up when you're supposed to be asleep because you got school tomorrow. So thank God this game doesn't do that. But that's the most I can say about it. Mega Man, it ain't. It ain't even Ultraman. It ain't even Paper Doll Man. Vigilante. <laughs> 
The skin. I'm not gonna say that. That might be a slur. I will never forget the time I went to myabandonware.com and I found a game called Oh No in the Wonderland. And no, I won't review it. I'll give you guys a couple seconds to recover from that. Don't worry. This guy will just be standing here kicking respawning enemies because that's all you do in this game. Literally, this is all you do. You just kick waves of enemies. I think there's a punch too, but it does the exact same amount of damage. So why? Just kick them in the face. People giving you shit, kick them in the face. Your wife talking shit, kick her in the face. Your divorce lawyer saying that you owe $15,000, kick them in the fucking face. Or hit them with nunchucks. I really don't care. Wait, guys, hold up. I gotta go to the PP room. What the fuck is the PP room? Why is there two of them? If they would have made the second one the poo poo room, I would have lost my fucking mind. Was this like a localization error? Like they didn't know what the English word for toilet was? So they called it the pee pee room? My god, I am 31 years old. Why am I laughing at pee pee? I tell you what's pee pee, this stupid level boss that regenerates health. Apparently what they want you to do is make him fall on the ground and then start punching him in the face, but I had better luck just tapping buttons. I couldn't get past the second level because this boss is bullshit. Look how they fuse together to make one super boss. Game over, start the whole game over again. Nah, this game's going in the pee pee room. Deep blue, more like deep throat a goat. Let me tell you something, the Turbo Graphics is best known for having a plethora of spaceship shoot 'em up type games. And deep blue is the worst one of all. The graphics, the music, the gameplay, the controls, and the overall aesthetic of the game screams Action 52. For one thing, why is it letterboxed? Could the Turbo Graphics not handle its awesomeness and look at what you're shooting you're just shooting fish the fish aren't even trying to hurt you you're the one hurting them is this one of those weird twist games where you're the villain you were the real monster feel bad about yourself okay the last of us not even anything interesting going on man it's given me nothing to work with it's just genuinely a bad game with nothing to say about it that might make it the worst game on this video but the night is young. F1 Circus. Oh, a racing game. Okay. Well, I can't read Japanese, but I'm pretty sure I know how to drive a car. Even a Japanese one. Shoutouts to my buddy Rush Nerd, who drives an 88 Toyota Supra as his daily driver and spends about five grand a month just to keep it on the road. Don't you fucking start. Well, let the sus car sing you the song of its people. <laughs> <laughs> stop! 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 <laughs> oh my fucking god! I'm gonna lose my fucking mind if I keep listening to that. On what universe does a car sound like this? I guess the sus tire Winnegg universe. Oh my god, you go so fast! And you have to hear this shit the whole time? I would go insane! What the fuck? Guys, wh what if this was the game that had the 24 hour mode? You go so damn fast, you can barely compensate for the curves! <laughs> How are you supposed to play this game, man? Now I know why it's called F1 Circus! Fucking clowns made this game, man! Oh my god. I'm gonna have an aneurysm if I listen to this anymore. We gotta move on. We gotta move. Okay, here's another racing game. It's called Moto Rotor. Is it gonna live up to my high expectations? Oh, you can like customize your car. That's kind of neat. I almost called it a mechanic and realized that's a pun. Uh-huh, really? It's really, really slow micro machines. And apparently I can drop mines in order to make that. What the fuck? Are you seeing this? When they hit the edge of the screen, it puts them back in the center of the screen? Hold on a second while I open this gigantic can full of why. Could they not figure out how to make them go off screen or something? Also, you notice that you can just drive right into the cars? I'm so confused right now. If they give you mines to make the cars spin out, but then gonna put the cars back close to you anyway, what's the whole point? They don't know what balance 
racing means neither. Later stages, the cars become faster than you. This game is a really raw piece of meat. It needs to cook. This was in no shape to sell for $60. Might I add that $60 in 80s money, so that's more like $120 now. Could you imagine spending $120 on this? You could buy so much for $120. One tank of gas, one box of bullets, one set of printer cartridges, one copy of Pokemon Soul Silver, one small car tire. This got depressing, didn't it? Okay, this game is called Silent Debuggers, and I thought this was going to be a spaceship shooter. Man, was I wrong. It is a couple of pixels away from being an FPS. What you do is you travel along these corridors and try to find all the monsters monsters in the level and eliminate them. And it has a lot of cutscenes and dialogue and lore. There's a lot of heart in this game. Sometimes it gets plain scary because there's no music. It's just the monster alarm going off and your footsteps. And when the monsters come out, sometimes they jump at you real fast or they come up behind you and scare the shit out of you. Fucking 16 bit jump scare. I made a big mistake my first go around though. Apparently I was using a gun that drains your energy. Kind of like Kalik again, huh? This game reminds me a lot of Kalik, but it's a Data East game not a Genki game. But yeah, the first time I died because my battery went dead. But then I figured out how to switch between different guns. So now I wasn't draining my energy anymore. And guys, shooting up them monsters, getting jump scared. Dare I say it, I started liking this game. And then disaster struck. The next level was set up in different sections. And if you didn't eliminate the aliens that were in that certain section, it would be sealed off. And if all four sections got sealed off, it was game over. What happened was I was in one of those sections while it got sealed off and I instantly died. And did I get a continue screen? No, I got a title screen. Start over right from the tippy top. Ah, oh, there were so many games that would just be good if they just had a way to save. You almost did it, Turbo Graphics. I was rooting for you, but nope. I'm gonna have to not recommend this one too. There's very little info about this game. Apparently it was released on the Wii Virtual Console and at the time it got bad reviews. So maybe it is a bad game, I don't know. Impossible. Okay guys, this game blew my mind and let me explain why. I did a Commodore 64 episode a while back and one of the games I reviewed was called Monty on the Run. Well, this game is the sequel. Why it's on the Turbo Graphics, I have no idea, but it's also also on the Commodore and the Amiga. And you can tell the composer for this game is a Commodore 64 musician. Listen to this shit and rock out. <laughs> And just because I feel like it, here's the C64 version of that song. It's even better. <laughs> me to a wall and beat the shit out of me. That's a good ass song. The composer who made this song is Barry Leach, who also did Lotus 2 and Top Gear for the Super Nintendo. Yeah, he did this song. <laughs> So all together, this is a weird game. It's a sequel to a Commodore 64 game, and it's probably one of the only British games on the Turbo Graphics. And guys, you know my stance on old 80s British platformers. Good music, bad game. And Impossible is no different. The only attack you have is a very sluggish kick, and you also stuff enemies in boxes and you can throw those boxes. But nothing wants to work right. You have to like kick the box in the air and then jump on it. And the throwing angle is all jacked up. Not to mention, I have a really big theory that your hitbox is bigger than it looks. Because in order to kick an enemy, you have to be right up to it. And they're likely to hit you before you hit them. And raindrops hurt you. What the actual fuck? You're supposed to be a superhero or something, ain't you? You see what I mean? You have to be touching the fucking enemy before you can kick it. Yeah, kick his ass. Kick both their asses at the same time. Okay, game design 101 right here. Check this 
this out. There's a rock right here that's supposed to fall down when I get under it. Now, in a good game, they would leave you enough time to run under it or wait for it to fall before passing, but not this game. Not only does it not give you enough time, it hurts you before it's even fallen down. And because the hitbox is so big, I keep accidentally touching it. The crap an origami bird hurt me? A goose! Ah, crap. Ah, uh, fuck. Fuck these jo- You son of a bitch! Oh, I can kick it? No reason? Stupid ass game. You had to die, you stupid camera, son of a bitch. Oh, fuck off! How was I supposed to know that was there? Oh, God in heaven and his seven Spanish angels! This game were an ice cream flavor, it'd be pralines and dick. God, I literally cannot do anything without getting hit by something! Somebody put their stamp of approval on this game and said, Yeah, this is fine. Sell it to kids. I'm dead. You know what? Good. I'm tired of this shit. Wait a minute, I don't know that music. What if I speed it up a little bit? Yeah, I do know this music. I don't know from where, but wherever it was, whatever happened was horrifying and amazing at the same time. It was a different world, a different internet. It was a simpler time. Well, it's gone now. Next, JJ and Jeff. Okay, this one's got a weird backstory. This game was originally based on two real-life Japanese comedians, but then they brought the game over here and localized it, and now it's just two random guys. Yeah! Yeah, he grooving! You jamming! Yeah, let him go! He's got to move and move and ba- uh, Wait a minute, is my health going down? It is, my health is going down, why? Oh, you can go to the bathroom. Oh, I mean the pee-pee room. Try kicking above the stump, chump. What? Uh, it gave me full health, I'm not gonna question it. What, you're telling me I can't touch those random rocks? They logs of shit? Oh, speaking of shit! Apparently birds make big dog turds! Oh, hello, Jeff. I'm not gonna ask why you're in a fursuit, but I will ask who made it. Oh, uh, uh, jump, I guess? Uh, no. Maybe I didn't jump far enough. Uh, no, you really can't make that jump. Well, what the hell are you supposed to do? What? You just kick in a random area on top of this tree stump and a platform appears. Man, the Turbo Graphics has been pulling out all the shit I ain't never seen before. At this point, if you told me I could find a secret level by doing jumping jacks while singing Kumbaya, I would believe you. There's not really much to say about this game. It's some really weird, really mediocre platformer, and that's about it. And I've had all of it I can take. Yo, bro! Yo, brother, where art thou? Get around, woo! -hoo! Okay, Mike Love's gonna be pissed. He's gonna want them royalties. Well, surprise, surprise, all the songs in this game are Beach Boys. That's California Girls, which I think David Lee Roth did better. David Lee Roth does everything better. Until he got old, now I sing better than him. Okay, sorry about the 80s rock rant. I'm like that. Did you know that Eddie Van Halen would lock himself in a closet until he could play better? I don't want to review this game. It's a piece of shit. God, the controls of this game were just so awful. Oh, so you use the directional pad to go where you want to go, right? But you have to keep pushing that direction and you'll keep going forward faster and faster. But if you want to stop, you have to push the directional pad in the opposite direction, but you don't stop immediately. You have to keep pushing it so you'll slow down. So if you want to stop in a very specific spot, you have to keep pushing in the opposite direction to try to get your ass to slow back down. Down. You never really stop where you want to go. And the object of the game is to kill all the enemies, right? Well, good luck aiming at them. You have to adjust to the shittiness of the controls to figure out how you're going to get to where you want to go. The second level has you killing a bunch of beehives that keep spawning bee tornadoes. Tons of them, and they won't leave you alone. You're trying to get in a decent spot to shoot at these beehives, but these damn tornadoes keep coming at you. And again, the situation has been made worse with the addition of Get more bees. Baby, since you left me, there been bees stinging me in the ass. Hold up, I got another verse in me. Fuck your mother, fuck, fuck your mother. All the people that made this bullshit. Die of AIDS and gonorrhea. Hope you die and die in a ball pit. A ball pit? Where'd I get that from? I guess Dashcon. Ghost Manor. It's, it's like Dark Castle, but they tried and it still didn't work out. Please, Arthur, use the- Arthur, I want you to go to that old manor and get us some money. 
Dutch, I, I'm, I'm trying to get to that ghost man, but I'm, I'm dummy thick. My ass is so big that I'm, Dutch, I'm falling through the floor and into the damn sewers. Dutch, Dutch, I just broke my ass bone. <laughs> my butt don't feel right. <laughs> Dutch, Dutch, this motherfucker's coming out of barrels. They're after my butt bone. <laughs> <laughs> what? This is the worst video I've ever made. You know what's bad is most of this footage of this game is just me going up these same damn platforms over and over again because I couldn't get back up. I couldn't get no further than this. Like once you get stuck down here, that's it. I got up to right here and there's all these damn candles in the way and they burn you to death. That's as far as I got in this game. I give it two tuberculosis lungs out of five. <laughs> I just, I just thought about calling this video Arthur's Butt Bone. <laughs> okay, we are almost done. We got two more games and then we can call this a day. Vig, vig, viguis, vagues, vagues, tactical gladiator. It's, it's a shmup, but you're not a spaceship. You're a big ass mech. And you can kind of hover in the air and you have to push down to turn around, which makes no sense at all. Get down, turn around, go to town. It's fun. Like I actually enjoy playing it. You can upgrade your mech, which is kind of cool. And then he's got more health. He can hover longer and all kind of cool stuff. I'm speechless. This is actually a turbo graphics game that I like. I mean, it's a pretty simple game. You just shoot, turn around, shoot, hover, shoot, but it works. I like it. We might actually end this video on a high note. Fuck you, here's a game called Toilet Kids. I bet you didn't expect me to say that. I slammed the brakes on the scroll wheel when I saw this game. After downloading this, I'm probably on a watch list now. I mean, Toilet Kids. It feels disgusting just to say. You just had to hear it. I had to play the shit. And somebody ripped this ROM on Christmas Eve of 96. Merry fucking Christmas. So here's the recording of it. You get to feel my pain now. Now, I can't show you this intro, but here's what happens. He takes his pants off. Don't worry, it's censored. And then the toilet erupts like a volcano and he gets sent to the toilet realm. You can't make this stuff up. And here's the game. Would you have guessed it's a shmup in the style of Xevious? Me neither. Those are, in fact, golden poos. That is, in fact, a frog throwing shit at you. And those are turtles with turds for shells. You get it, turtle? Ha 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 ha. And you also fight spiders with asses and pig noses i i uh... there's also an enemy i can't show you which looks like an uncut dick and balls and of course toilet seats which throw turd bombs at you beautiful other than that it's just like a really bad clone of xevious i wouldn't wish this game on my worst enemy that's right not even you jake and that's the turbo graphics 16 crap stravaganza but we're not done because the turbo graphics had a cd add-on the turbo graphics cd predates the sega cd the jaguar cd and all the other cd based consoles in the world it's the first one released way back in 1989 and when we come back we're gonna look at some turbo graphics CD games. You think you've seen some shit now? Ho 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 ho! You just fucking wait. But that's all for today. We have merchandise! Yes, I am announcing the grand opening of the Working Man Games merch store. Look at here, you can have my ugly mug on a t-shirt. Or a mug, or a pillow, or a bag, or a mouse pad. You know you want to rub your mouse all over my face. We've got one of Dixie too, and we've got a lot more stuff coming. But you gotta buy the shit first. That's redbubble.com, WMG merch. And with that said, you can become a patron too and see the videos before anybody else does and you get your name on the board, and you get a Discord. I talk a lot when people talk to me. I'll talk until you want me to get away from you, and then I'll wonder why you don't want to talk to me anymore. It's a vicious cycle, kids. Roll them Patreon names.